Welcome to the Not Old Better Show. I'm Paul Vogelsang, and this is episode number 471. Today's show is sponsored by Medterra. We are talking butterflies today. Yes, butterflies. As part of our Smithsonian Associates Inside Science author interview series, our guest today is science journalist and New York Times best-selling author Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams will be presenting at the Smithsonian Associates program via Zoom September 2nd, 2020, and the title of her presentation is The Language of Butterflies, A Message of Hope. Both fragile and enduring, butterflies have induced a mania for hoarding and collecting in some and fantastical travels in others. We plant gardens to attract them. We build habitats to guide their migrations. And we study their intricate systems to help us design next-generation medical devices. But their most critical role yet may be as messengers for climate change and what we must do to uplift our planet's future. Our guest today, science journalist Wendy Williams, takes a look at the scientists, gardeners, naturalists, and citizen scientists who have joined together to successfully decipher the secrets of butterflies in order to protect them. Wendy Williams shares surprising details like the unexpectedly intricate shapes of butterflies' unique wing scales, the microscopic details of the butterfly proboscis, and even the biological tools that allow monarch butterflies to migrate south each fall. Author Wendy Williams will explore the factors behind declining butterfly populations from habitat destruction to climate change, and Wendy Williams will offer insights into the deepening bond we have with these insects and their importance to our own survival in her new book and her presentation, The Language of Butterflies, How Thieves, Hoarders, Scientists, and Other Obsessives Unlocked the Secrets of the World's Most Favorite Insect. Let's listen as Wendy Williams reads from her new book, The Language of Butterflies. Herman Strecker was, by all accounts, a very odd man. He had a long face and a long neck and an even longer out-of-control beard. He looked like Moses. He had deep, sunken, grief-filled eyes. He lived the unkempt life of a zealot, going so far as to crawl in between his bedsheets with his pants and boots on. By day, he was a poor stone carver who specialized in carving angels on children's gravestones. But by night, Strecker descended into a deeper, darker lust, a greedy compulsion that eventually dominated his entire existence. Some people want to possess money. Others want to possess clothes or cars or stamps or houses or even politicians. Strecker wanted butterflies, lepidoptera. That's Latin for butterflies and moths, lepos being the Greek word for scale. More about this later. He yearned to own at least one specimen of every butterfly species on Earth. He came close. By the time he died in 1901, having lived a life of intense emotional desperation, he had amassed 50,000 specimens. I can't imagine having that many of anything in my house. There must have been precious little room for anything else. That, of course, is our guest today, author, science journalist, Wendy Williams. Please join me in welcoming to the Not Old Better Show, Smithsonian Associates Inside Science, author interview series via internet phone, Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure talking to you. I'm excited about this subject. I think it's one that our audience is going to find fascinating because we're going to be talking about the language of butterflies, a message of hope, and your upcoming Smithsonian Associates presentation. I wonder if you'd tell us briefly about that and maybe tell us a little bit about how you're going to use Zoom to engage our audience. Well, I'm really excited about Zoom. You know, this whole change and What's happened in the country for the last six months or so has has been startling for all of us, but I have learned to some degree to love technology. And the neat thing about Zoom is that I can show as many visuals as I want to while I talk. So I have about 60 different visuals planned. I'm going to be showing pictures of butterflies, of course, but pictures of the people that I talk about in the book, like poor old Herman Strecker. I'm going Mm -hmm. to be showing um, art that has been done of butterflies and a few graphs, a few scientific graphs, not not too many, um, and also an awful lot of pictures of butterfly gardens, the kinds of flowers, the kinds of wildflowers that butterflies not 
only like, but need to have in order to thrive. So basically what I'm going to be doing is just uh, flash, flash, flashing through all these wonderful things that I, you know, couldn't put in the book. You can't put that much in the book, but I can put everything in, in the Smithsonian presentation. So I'm going to have an awful lot of fun. Yeah, it sounds like it. I, I think this will be fun. I think seeing the photographs of these beautiful insects is really going to be marvelous, a special part of, of your particular uh, presentation. You know, as humans, we, we, we collect butterflies. Um, many have butterfly gardens, and so we attract butterflies uh, to us. Uh, my wife and I have a, a few hikes that we like to go on in northern Virginia. One happens to be to a butterfly preserve where butterflies are protected mm. what do you th- what is it about butterflies that bring about such you know just wonder and appreciation well that's what i address in the book um mm-hmm. my theory and which i will be addressing in depth in my presentation at, with the smithsonian my theory is that the colors that butterflies exhibit tap into very very deep Uh, recesses in our brain, ancient, ancient pathways that have been there for um, forever, you know, really since we became humans. And um, the pathways date back probably further and further to that. Color is one of the most basic forms of communication that we have on our planets in the universe. All animals respond in, in, um, in empathic ways, but also in, um, assertive ways to the colors that they see around him. It's the way that nature first devised to communicate um, with living things before we had things like language and words. So I'm going to be looking at that in depth in this presentation. What are some of the myths about butterflies? Well, the the biggest myth, from my point of view, now remember, I have to explain that that, um, I went at this study of butterflies as a neophyte. Uh I was not, and I'm not an expert. I'm a science journalist. I'm not a butterfly expert. So what I do is talk to people who are butterfly experts. One of the biggest myths that I went into this project with was thinking of butterflies as delicate kinds of things that were ephemeral and could disappear in the blink of an eye. That's not the case. They're actually quite hardy. Um, I had a very good experience going out with a scientist who excuse me, collects and tags butterflies in order to do a research project on the West Coast. And he had me actually hold the butterflies and tag them. And far from being ephemeral things that could vanish in your hand, they were actually quite firm. Um, The other thing about butterflies is that people kind of think that they're sort of magical beings. And they're not magical at all. They're very practical. Um, They've devised, well, I guess if you can use that kind of active word, they've devised ways or evolution has helped them devise ways, is maybe a better way of wording it, um, to survive on a planet in which flowers come and go and in which... um, in which life forms come and go, and they some of them are um, are much hardier than than we might imagine. They are adaptable, and they can change as the seasons change. Let's take a quick sponsor break, but stay tuned to hear more from science journalist, New York Times best-selling author Wendy Williams about the wonderful, important, and critical role of butterflies. Please stay tuned. Hi, it's Paul. We'll be right back with Wendy Williams and the language of butterflies, a message of hope. I have a quick message from our sponsor, Medterra. You know, as we talk about health and as we age, this idea of function plays a bigger and bigger role. How do we stay active, vital, functional, mobile, and pain-free or relatively pain-free? I'll tell you how I'm doing that these days. As you all know, I'm an exercise guy, but I also use our sponsor, Medterra's great full line of functional CBD products for rapid relief of occasional pain. Medterra has a new topical pain cream that's great for an active lifestyle or you are recovering from any injury. Medterra sent me some of the pain cream a few weeks ago and both Gretchen and I have been using it for pain relief of the normal aches and pains that come from, well, being 63 as I am. (laughs) It applies easy and smooth and leaves you with a refreshing relief that you can take with you no matter where you go. This is great stuff, the Medterra Pain Cream. It's a combination of CBD, 
arnica, menthol, and other natural ingredients. I apply it directly to my knee as well as my lower back, and it works almost instantly, but you can apply it anywhere and everywhere because it lasts for hours. It gives you full relief of pain. Medterra developed this new pain cream with their medical advisors to specifically treat sore muscles and joints, injuries, and inflammation. All Medterra products are third-party tested for quality and purity, and they contain zero THC. Medterra products are legal, and they are not going to get you high. The Medterra Pain Cream has allowed me and Gretchen to enjoy tennis, walking outside, and our ever-active lives, something you aren't able to do with nagging, debilitating pain. We've decided to focus on each other, and we spend less time focusing on what hurts. Both Gretchen and I highly recommend Medterra products, and it's recommended for people just like you in our Not Old Better Show audience who deal with lingering pain or soreness. And now... By visiting MedterraCBD.com and entering NOB at checkout, you'll receive 20% off. That's MedterraCBD.com and NOB at checkout for 20% off. We'll have all of this in the show notes. But remember, Medterra CBD and NOB, a perfect combination for best-in-class pain relief results. Thanks, everybody. We are with Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams will be presenting The Language of Butterflies, A Message of Hope. Coming up here Wednesday, September 2nd at Smithsonian Associates via Zoom. Wendy Williams is a science journalist and is here talking today with us about her presentation. And I wonder, Wendy Williams, if we can uh, talk for a second about the critical role that that you mention in the book. And the critical role, of course, for butterflies. What, what do you mean by that? Well, butterflies are, among other things, important as pollinator species. Not all of them are pollinator species, but there are plenty of them, <clears throat> excuse me, that are pollinator species that help um, wildflowers reproduce. And they are part of a complicated ecosystem that scientists are only just now beginning to unravel. I have some stories in the book about a group of butterflies that are tiny, small little butterflies. They're related to each other, but they um, they have a dependency or a, an addiction to ants. And we we are only just beginning to understand how all kinds of species of ants actually help keep these butterflies alive and how the butterflies keep the species of ants going. Uh, so that's really a fascinating thing. They belong in our ecosystem and um, are one of the engines that, that keep the natural world, um, the gorgeous field of flowers that you see when you go out for walks. They're one of the engines that keep those things going. Mm-hmm. Well, we've we've referenced your book and you've, you've uh, generously read from your book. It's excellent, by the way. And, and again, the title is The Language of Butterflies, How Thieves, Hoarders, Scientists, and other obsessives unlocked the secrets of the world's favorite insect. In in the book, you discuss butterflies in relation to climate change. You discuss the declining butterfly butterfly populations and many other areas of, of butterfly science. Why don't you leave us with the most important fact from the book that, that you'd like to tell our audience so that we better understand uh, and even deepen our bond uh, between between us and, and butterflies. When you look at butterflies, you are seeing an intricate group of animals who have evolved over millions and millions of years to fit into our ecosystem. And they are part of our lives. When we look at them, things are happening in our psyches that we may not even know are happening, things that we're unconscious of. Um, but they light up our they light up our lives. One of my favorite stories in the book was about a materials scientist who was out uh, in South Carolina walking with his two young daughters, and they were uh, suddenly fascinated by butterflies, and they started chasing the butterflies. And the scientist wa- wondered why the little girls were chasing the butterflies. So he went over and he watched them, and as he watched them, he got a lot of great ideas for how he could improve medical technology that he was working on just by looking at butterfly scales. We don't want to lose these insects because they offer clues to us not only 
of the natural world around us, but of the world that we live in, ideas of technology that can even help improve our own lives, our own health. So I don't think we want to... Um, I don't think we want to think of them as something that we don't need in the world. Um, I think they really improve our lives a lot. And in that way, they are uh, the message of hope. The title of the presentation by Wendy Williams is The Language of Butterflies, of Message of Hope. Wendy Williams, thanks for being so generous with us today, reading from your new book, The Language of Butterflies. We're looking forward to seeing you on Wednesday, September 2nd. But again, great book. I'm going to encourage my audience to go check out this wonderful book by Wendy Williams, as well as the presentation coming up. We're going to put links to where you can find more information about the book, about Wendy Williams and her work, as well as the upcoming Smithsonian Associates presentation. But Wendy Williams, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. My thanks to science journalist and New York Times best-selling author Wendy Williams for her generous time today. Please check out our links for more information about Smithsonian Associates, specifically the upcoming The Language of Butterflies presentation by Wendy Williams. My thanks to Matera for sponsoring today's show, and my thanks always to you, my wonderful Not Old Better Show audience. Remember, stay safe, everyone. Practice smart social distancing and talk about better. The Not Old Better Show. Thanks, everybody.